Welcome. This is the Global Summit House Podcast. Catch power interviews and discussions with influential, inspiring, and powerful people. Explore what's possible by tuning into this podcast with our all new The Writer's Project episodes, featuring one of the world's most inspired thinkers and writers. Visit our website at www.globalsummithouse.com. Hello, my people, my people out there in cyber world and podcast world, and uh, those who just happen to stumble across this great, wonderful recording. Today, we have a very special guest here today. I think you guys are going to enjoy much of the story and be inspired by all that this gentleman has to offer us. Well, the story goes as follows. Cassand- Cassandra Maddox Nablisi was born Cassandra Virginia Chestnut on January 4th, 1930 in New York City, New York. She was a daughter of James Samuel Chestnut and Bessie Anna Hairston Chestnut. She attended high school at Seward Park High School in Manhattan, joined the U.S. Navy where she served while working at the American Broadcasting Company as a teletypist at night. She studied and earned a bachelor's degree at Fordham University and a master's at Teachers College at Columbia University. Following her graduation, she was awarded a scholarship to Keene Abduyazi University in Mecca, before it was moved to Judah and began a new career as a college professor. As a business professor, her travels included countries like Iraq, Libya, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and other African, Middle Eastern, and Far Eastern countries. Unfortunately, she passed away May 9, 2008 at Loma Linda Veterans Hospital of Complications of Diabetes. She was survived by her three sons, Robert, who's here with us today, James and Howard Maddox and a daughter-in-law, Ann Maddox. With that in mind, we do have a wonderful story to offer you guys that will come from the mouth of her son who is here with us. So how's it going today? Not bad. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Robert. If you can, Robert, would you do share with us a little short introduction and, and just tell us uh, how you play a part in, you know, helping us to understand uh, the story of of Miss Maddox. Well, I'm our oldest son and uh, I'm a mama's boy, which I'm not ashamed to say. So I, uh, after she passed away, going through her things, well, I already knew she had had tried to, uh, she had written a book. I just, I read the book. It's been a while since I've read it, uh, but I read the book and I felt that it was um, her way of telling the story of uh, black people, not just African-American people, but people who are of our colored uh, brown skin, telling a history that we don't necessarily hear in school. Yeah, We might get a little black history, but it doesn't really dive into uh, what people of color are... Uh, like all over the world or what our origin may have been. So I decided to publish the book. Yes, I I believe this is very timely. And you happen to know know your mom and and kind of experience part of just her walk. What do you believe was the original intention? That the original intention was after having traveled and spoken to people in foreign countries in Africa and the, the, the Far East, I believe it was, was her intention to tell a version of the story coming from the people that she spoke with in those countries. It was her intention to tell a, another version of Black history on this planet from someone else's perspective besides a Eurocentric historian's perspective. Okay, Robert. Uh, so once you were introduced to the writings and you began to see that this story is 
quite dynamic in its own right and, and that it could come from a perspective that maybe we as Americans and maybe even those in the globe isn't used to uh, being exposed to the story in this matter. What were your initial thoughts? Well, um, at first I, I didn't know what to think of the book, but then um, I'm, I've had some, some college, I've studied um, world civilization and other things. And the history of black people on the planet is not, has never actually been presented to me. Uh, I have, I've got a master's degree. I've, I've uh, got gone through all of the other collegiate uh, training and I have never been given the opportunity to learn about other black people in the world. Uh, how uh, the, the uh, what did you call it? The dysphoria? Yeah, this uh, this war has, has been spread throughout the totality of the planet. Uh, her book, to me, presents um, uh, other opportun another opportunity to learn about black people and where we may have come from, how we disperse throughout the world. I, I can definitely see that, uh, especially just the fact that you know she was very talented in the matter of being an interpreter for the UN just having to be exposed to, to a huge diverse number of different people what what were some of the trends you you noticed in the book you know f to be able to tie us closer together to understand more of the the people that that they refer to us as black as far as the tie-in goes she starts talking about things that we are not presented with in, in school. And the history of black people in India, for instance, where I had no idea that blacks had been taken as slaves into India. And then I had to go and look at, at that to see where blacks had actually been taken as slaves in a number of countries that we don't learn about in a, in a regular collegiate or a high school, high school history. Her ties, her, her research took her out of the, the normal scholastic training where she was able to go into these countries and actually talk to um, other uh, scholastic type people who were able to tell her things that uh, she was able to um, research on her own and uh, provide a perspective on that we don't really have. I mean, it is on the reader to go and read, r research for themselves outside of the normal uh, history path that we're given as students. Yes. To uh, verify, which I tried to do myself to because she presents facts, well, she presents a story that readers need to research, the readers need to research for, for themselves. The story of black people in India, uh, in China, uh, black people in Indonesia, uh, the Indonesian islands hold uh, people whose skin are as just, just as dark as ours and whose hair is like ours. And this is something that we don't, have never known anything about, or at least we're not taught. Right. There have been allusions on, on uh, South American history, uh, references to black people having been in South America. And this is through statues that show um, faces with clearly African features in South America and Australia. I, I myself have been to Australia and I wondered at the people that were there who look African but are through uh, over centuries have their own language, a separate culture, but they look just like me. Right. Uh, also in the uh, South Pacific Islands, there are black people, uh, people of brown skin. I'll start saying people of brown skin. 
who also looked just like I do. And I had never started, actually, I, I thought about it while I was in the Navy traveling, but I never brought it together in the way that she's tried to bring it together here in the book. The story is, come, is her perspective of what happened to black people on the globe, globally, how our interactions with people from other culture affected us as, um, as a people changed us as a people yes i i can definitely see where this book is going in oh. the direction it's going in and i would also be curious to know and i'm quite sure the audience would be too just what has the book done to help you learn about yourself to help inspire you the book has given me a perspective that i didn't have about myself because it gives me a, a history of travel most of black history that, that I've learned has been simply that we were slaves. And that's where black history starts and, and stops. Her book has taught me that we have a deeper history. Her book has taught me that the, um, we have a history that is not just within the United States, but it's in India, it's in Europe, it's in South America. And it's in the Pacific, um, South Pacific Islands as well. American American history puts you in a cast, or I, I don't know if cast is the right word, but it puts you in a slot. And it tells you that this is what you all are, and this is what we have done for you, and this is what you have done with what we have given you. But I think her book lets me know that, um, tells me that this is not who we are. Who we are is something else entirely. We've been affected throughout the world by other cultures that have taken black people and turned them into what they wanted them to be. And has it all necessarily all been something negative, but it has not been who we actually are. I think the book is telling us that our identity was, um, Would you, what's the word? Maybe disperse, I, you know, would be like kind of like the word you want to fit in there? I don't think disperse is the right word, but I, I think our identity has been interpreted for us through other people's eyes. Right. Okay. And then having, and having our identity interpreted in other people's eyes, we have lost who we are in our own eyes. You know, I really appreciate, you know, you sharing that. And I, I think once readers do read the book, it's going to, as you mentioned early on, uh, definitely provoke uh, that outside research, that outside personal research to, to do more research. Can you also uh, possibly see that uh, with this book, also it can maybe serve as um, maybe even uh, a teaching a teaching resource uh, for for those who may want to you know start retelling the story. At the end of the book, she says, uh, "Every black professional must now write something regarding what he has to say to descending black post posterity, preferably on his his opinions, perhaps regarding his field of experts. Sociologists need to write, and if they own a computer and print or publish their own books." Uh, she wants to inspire people, other black professionals, historians, sociologists, whatever, or just a person who's interested. She, I believe she wanted other people to look into the history, to look into world history on their own and give their perspective because it's never, it's very rarely been done. And where I have, where I've read myself, it's been somebody regurgitating what, what uh, somebody else has said. I'm not white bashing. I'm not European bashing. Right. But most of our history has come from people who have their agenda. Uh, I think that there are three truths. There's the truth of the conqueror. There's the truth of the person who's been conquered. And then somewhere in between, there's the actual truth 
of a story of the world. And um, I believe my mother was trying to reach for the actual truth, the story of the world, what has happened between dominant cultures, technologically dominant cultures, and cultures that were not so technologically uh, advanced. Not saying that they were, one culture was lesser than the other, but one culture had the advantage of weaponry um, and and the uh, ability to coerce people into believing what they wanted them to believe to get their way. And, you know, we talk about the Europeans, but you've also got the uh, the Arab world, you've got the, the Asian world, all these worlds where people had took from one uh, culture or one set of beings and turned them into something that they needed them to be. Uh, we talk about slavery in America, but we never talk about slavery in India. That's something I didn't know about until I read my mother's book and then did some reading on my own. There was slavery in, in other countries, uh, the, the Arab world, where uh, I'm not bashing Islam, but uh, the Arabs were great slaveholders. Uh, they took people into slavery as well. Uh, they took their identity away from them. And if you take a person's identity away from them, you effectively turn them into um, what you want them to be. They're no longer who they are. If you understand where I'm coming from, I hope yes. I'm saying this clearly. Yes. She, I believe she wants people to think differently. You know, you can't blame uh, a lack of knowledge on, on a people who you call the oppressor if you never step outside the box and um, look for yourself. Uh, I think she addresses uh, religion in the book not just Islam, but uh, Catholicism. Mm -hmm. the, she talks about how um, Africans at one point had invaded, successfully invaded Europe for a period of time. I never knew these things when I was in high school. Right. And I was never presented with this when I was in... Um, I went to junior college for a time while I was in the uh, in the military, and this wasn't taught to me when I did world civilization. When I went to the library on my own, I was able to find out about Hannibal and Hannibal's march across the uh, the Alps and all this other stuff, but I was never told how long these people were in uh, Europe before. Europe pushed them out. Mm -hmm. I never learned a lot of things about myself that I should have learned in the educational system because it wasn't there. And when you step outside the educational system, uh, and if you're fortunate enough like she was to go to foreign countries and sit down and talk to people who are uh, in the academic world, or talk to people who are um, uh, elders passing down what they have been given through the years as their history, you start to see something something else coming out of, uh, Amer uh, not American history, but world history, that you can go back and find records where you can approach a sub uh, the subject of uh, history, world history, in a different light than what we've been given. Yes, I, I totally agree there. And I just find it interesting with with the rise of consciousness and with so many movements uh, that are really uh, geared towards progressive uh, aggressive progress. Would would it be fair to say that this this particular book can also, you know, continue to just to be to serve as part of that that progress that's being made to, you know, uh, bring things like this, you know, um, to surface level to consciousness, uh, to 
to to make people you know keep people aware of 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 the history of like not only just the things that have happened uh horrendously in uh, this country of america but uh also throughout the globe yes i believe her book was meant to be a stepping stone for people to consider not just american history but world history um I think uh, I remember in the book, she said that she didn't want to blame all white people as being the boogeyman, uh, the, the thing in the dark that to be afraid of, because she, for example, in the history of India, she talks about how certain religious caste uh, the, the, the introduction of the Aryans into India, uh, a lighter skinned people to a darker skinned people, and how uh, the Aryans brought law to uh, their law to India, and uh, how people looked at skin color as being superior, uh, and they embraced that and married into that. It is, I mean, it's not just India. In other countries, uh, darker skinned people embraced uh, skin color as being something that marked superiority. Uh, but um, in India, the, the introduction of Aryans who brought their law into uh, India when they conquered India, and uh, like the the codes of Manu, written by uh, Mana, how, I, I have problems with the Mana, Manava Brahman, which was intended as a guidebook uh, to proper behavior behavior for his tribe and the rise of um, Brahman as a, a uh, what is it, culture or religion based on the. Um, after, long after the Aryans were racially absorbed, uh, they attempted to recreate the past and form a future in their own image, uh, a caste system. I hope I'm not spinning my wheels here, but um, understanding the proper behavior of ex under the Hindu kings, things like this, uh, we we've, we've taken a. Uh, People of color have taken a uh, a system that was thrust upon us, thrust upon us. Yeah, well, if you're a conquered people, then things are thrust upon you, uh, ways of thinking, laws, and culture. We've taken these things uh, globally, and we've created a reality that was not necessarily the one that we were functioning under. And her book was meant to present where things are not where they might have been if we actually knew who we were before the cult cultures collided. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. You know, just going back to your mother real quickly, you know, and just curious, what, what are some of your fondest memories of her and, you know, and just, just her impact on this work? Some of my fondest memories of her, I was very proud of her going, she and my uncle, my, my grandmother's children, uh, maternal grandmother, going into Africa when we were small children. We, we uh, stayed with our grandmother. I uh, loved the fact that she was able to pick up so many languages and attempt to teach us uh, the languages that she picked up. When she wasn't traveling, uh, or she would taking us to places other we grew up in new york and she would take us to places other other than new york on little day trips things like that um she tried to teach us about foreign cultures when we were children while we had her teaching us we didn't have the school system teaching us the same thing but i love the fact that she even though she was divorced she had to work while she was in school and she had so many things uh, on her on her table she would take time to try and expand our sense of self 
and expand the world that we lived in by bringing into our world what she saw in the outside world, outside of the United States. I think that's very evident here, uh, you know, just from what she was doing at home and it, it definitely carried over it in, in, her, in her work too. You know, she was, uh, this was just, you know, seeing, seeing it, what it would be a fair assessment that this was uh, what she was essentially just called to do, you know, just to be in, in, in embedded in this, uh, this type of, uh, type of work. Now, if, if there's, you know, anything that, uh, you would say that probably be the biggest stumbling block, uh, for, for many reading it, uh, you know, what, what would that be? The biggest stumbling block for people reading this would be their, um, willingness to step outside of the box and say, what if, or, you know what, maybe not that, but maybe the biggest stumbling block would be access to people who are able to give you an, a different perspective. My mother was able to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't afraid to travel by herself. She was in, uh, like we were talking about earlier, the Middle East, she was in Africa and she would went there on her own. She went there to learn. Uh, the average person may not be able to do the same thing. And the world was a different place at that time. It wasn't as dangerous as it is now. Right. Uh, so she didn't have the stresses that a person might experience now traveling abroad. I know for my, uh, I'm studying for a doctorate's degree in business. And I will be traveling to um, Africa and a couple of hoping to get to a couple of European countries. So I have the concern of um, terrorist groups right. that I might be uh, confronted with. So um, at that time when she was traveling, I don't believe we had the threat of uh, Al Qaeda, ISIS, uh, Boko Haram. And if you travel as an American, you didn't really, you had to be aware of your environment. I mean, you'd be a fool to think that you could travel without worrying about being an American, but uh, she didn't have to worry about it as much then as I will or my my contemporaries my age and younger will uh, if they travel abroad. So our biggest stumbling block, our biggest barrier uh, is not insurmountable, but our biggest barrier would be getting access to the right people to give you an actual account of uh, black people in the world. Okay, or descendants of black people who at some point way back in our history traveled into the world uh, and became changed by the environments that they were uh, settled into. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really, it's really, re really you know, hopeful, you know, it is really hopeful. Uh, but it's also, you know, definitely a, a great contrast and uh, of, you know, where we are in this world today, you know, with everything versus, you know, where, where she was and how she was able to just, you know, freely, you know, obtain some of this information just by simply just, you know, uh, you know, being in the right place at the right time, so to speak. Yeah. You know, and so it, it's so much harder now. Uh, but, you know, but the book gives us much hope that, that like, that we know that the, the answers are out there. And if, if we want to go get, get those answers, we, we can go get those answers and start piecing the puzzles together. So, mm -hmm. so with just a little, little bit of time left here, you know, what, it, if there's anything you felt like you didn't get a chance to say here, you know, you know, what would those words be that you would like to just offer up? I think the book was meant to inspire people to look into into the world 
outside of what we've been given just in school. Uh, it, she's not talking about just black people. She's talking about Rome. She's talking about Indian cultures in India. She's talking about uh, Asian and um, uh, South, South Pacific history. I want to know more about black history than just slavery. I want to know more about the world than just what I've been given in, uh, in school. And I believe that she wants people to think about the world, not from what you see on television, not from what you see from school, but from what you get by interacting with people from foreign countries who may have a different story to tell or who may have an expanded story to tell from the narrow perspective you know, school, you've only got so much time to teach somebody something, so you have to decide what you're going to teach them. Well, maybe there is a bigger perspective that takes that narrow perspective and changes it from what your teacher is giving you to something that's a whole lot bigger, a whole lot different significance than, uh, than what you've been led to believe. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, most importantly, thank you so much for sharing your, your mother's legacy with us and, you know, and giving us this book, uh, gift, well, giving us this book. I, you know, I think it'd be fair to say that this is more of a gift uh, to the world because she, you know, uh, wanted it to be available as such. Now tell us, tell us the name of the book, and you know where we will be able to find it once once it's uh, definitely finished and, and ready. The name of the book is "The World That Was the World of the Black Man and What Happened to It." I found it on um, Amazon. I believe we're going to ex try and get it in the bookstores as well. And um, after reading through it, I had been looking for pictures to highlight some of the things she she was talking about and um so it may have a, another republic republishing uh another version coming out where uh, I, tr I will try to illustrate through with pictures uh the the people that she talks about and the people of the world that are uh might have a relationship that we never uh, realized. Well, thank you. Thank you once again, Robert, uh, for just your efforts here and uh, just for the book itself. And, and ladies and gentlemen out there, if you happen to be listening right now, we definitely want you to check that out available on Amazon. Uh, as per mentioned, uh, those details should be available in the episode description and in show notes. Oh, there are, there's also going to be a website. I haven't had time to uh, bring it together yet, but I'm working with uh, some people to try and get a, the website uh, online. It should be coming soon. Fantastic. Well, well, thank you. Thank you once again. And uh, to those out there, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, do take the time out if you haven't already uh, to share this uh, with someone as it will further the message and further the efforts of the, the publication of the book as well as just all that you have heard here today uh, and do repeat you know place press the repeat button go through the information one more time to help you to get some thought provoking and inspiration from the conversation uh, once again, we were just talking with Robert Maddox and the book and the information of the book will be available in the episode description, which you can find on Amazon.com. Uh, so thank you and to all uh, a, a wonderful day and, or evening wherever you are in the world. You've reached the end of another episode of the Global Summit House podcast. Subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Podbean, iHeartRadio, iTunes, or Google Play. Connect with us at GlobalSummitHouse.com. See you on the next episode.